Alrighty, so we are going to be using light brown sugar for this recipe, black food dye, this is McCormick, this is a liquid dye, milk chocolate chips, and this is from Target, this is cookie icing from Walmart, another cooking icing bag from Walmart, and finally, our King Arthur all-purpose flour. I absolutely love this flour, just in general, for baking. This is my favorite, I highly suggest it if you guys do baking and stuff it's it's really nice for making cookies the other thing that i also will be using is my little kitten table why am i showing that i don't think i even used that to be honest <laughs> i don't know why i'm i'm showing it but i guess i'm showing a little kitten um a tablespoon thing so just as a quick reminder for your dry ingredients you are going to be needing baking soda flour salt and you're going to be placing that aside then afterwards you're going to be working with your wet ingredients. You're just gonna leave it alone. You're not gonna bother with it. You're gonna do your baking soda, your salt, your flour, and just put them on the side and probably just forget about that they exist. Now, I guess this is where the kitten tablespoon comes in because I absolutely forgot what I used it for. So let's go ahead and focus next on our wet ingredients. So a little something that is completely different. Now, I did make a recipe for a Pet Simulator 99 inspired cookie. We are going to be making a Nightmare Kraken inspired cookie. Now, this is basically, in a nutshell, a chocolate chip cookie recipe that I ended up having to basically remaster, essentially, because I ended up using a recipe that I figured out here at home, and it and honestly actually worked out, so I'm really happy that it actually worked out for once. Now, the one thing that everybody should know about me is I am not a professional baker. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing 99% of the time. One time I ended up burning Nestle cookies and those were pre-made and I have absolutely no idea how that was even remotely possible. So that's just a little bit about me and my, my baking ability. But I am a cook so that comes naturally to me. So let's go ahead and get started and explain the process for this and hopefully you at home parents and your children can go ahead and make this for the upcoming fall and Halloween season. So for this recipe, you do need one cup of room temperature butter. It's really important that you guys actually get it to room temperature or at least semi-melted. Now, because I didn't really want to wait for that room temperature to hit, I decided to go ahead and heat it up in a pan. Don't put it up too high. It needs to be on low. Otherwise, you will burn the butter in the process of doing this. Now, I am using a salted one because I do enjoy having cookies. Having that little bit of salt, sweet and salty is actually really nice. So we'll go ahead and let this cook up and we'll go ahead and put that inside of our sugars. Okay, so now that you have your melted butter, as you can tell, it is semi-melted and you can still see the sticks are still there. Now, I am going to be using my KitchenAid mixer to go ahead and incorporate the brown sugar and the regular sugar. This way, it becomes creamy and you do not need to worry about adding any additional ingredients such as milk, stuff like that. But we are going to be adding in one cup of brown sugar and half a cup of regular green granulated sugar. We're going to go ahead and mix this for a while so they're actually all incorporated and you want to break down that additional butter in there that you're obviously seeing right now that are in chunks. So we'll go ahead and let this mix up and we'll go into the next process. Now I did purchase two types of food dye for this. Now I am using a McCormick black dye. This seems to be a regular liquid one. I usually like to go for gel because you do not need to add additional liquids to this, which can mess up the batter. So if you do use a liquid one, kind of be careful when you're doing it because you might add too much like I did in this video here. Now, while that's mixing, I'm actually going to go ahead and incorporate the egg. You only need one egg for this recipe. And yes, that one also needs to be semi-warm, aka room temperature. So as you can tell, I'm still mixing it and I want that incorporated 
preparation of just making sure that our nightmare cracking cookie is actually accurate to how the pet looks like inside a pet simulator 99 and it's really important i kept adding more and more and more so make sure that you actually get your little spatula it could be a silicone one i would recommend a silicone one and you're scraping as you're going you want to make sure all that dye is actually incorporated and mixed in it's really important that you do that otherwise you might have splotches of just straight up dye in your dough and you do not want that alrighty so now we are incorporating our singular egg now this is where you're going to go ahead and incorporate that and it's gonna take maybe about a minute or so again and once that's done you're gonna go ahead and set that aside because this is your wet ingredient section now for some odd reason I went ahead and added the black gel dye which I should have done instead of the other one because again I prefer gel over liquid more liquid into a wet ingredient is just going to cause more liquefaction and make it more runny and it's not fun when you do that because then you have to add more flour so we're gonna go ahead and let that mix out and we're gonna go ahead into the next section of mixing in your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients okay so now that we have everything prepared I do have the flour now this is the amount of flour that you're going to be using it's going to be two cups and one fourth I am using the brand called King Arthur all-purpose now when it comes to baking in general this is the flour that I normally go to because it is phenomenal for baking this is my favorite and we introduced half a teaspoon of salt one teaspoon of baking soda and we're just mixing that in also I kind of forgot to mention earlier within the liquid area of this portion I did also add one teaspoon of vanilla just to make sure I put text in that area so you guys don't forget make sure you guys look over that it's optional if you want to have that extra vanilla in there obviously you have all this sugar inside of it but as you can tell I'm not using a whisk for this and I am not using a hand mixer for it I'm also doing a small portion of flour first and then actually just using the spatula to gently mix it the main focus is you do not want to have gluten be activated in this and you do not need to make a bread out of it so we are gently just incorporating that and you just mix it around gently and you keep adding the flour as you go okay so once you're done incorporating the flour to your liquids the next step is getting one cup of chocolate chips now it is optional whichever one you want to use if you're a dark chocolate fan a milk chocolate fan a semi-sweet fan i personally like just regular milk chocolate i like that one it's well balanced that's why i said earlier if you forgot to put vanilla inside of it that's absolutely fine because now you got chocolate chip friends and you're also going to do the same method you're going to gently incorporate that but as you can tell it is a little liquidy for me personally so I am going to add a little bit more chocolate chips inside of it and then eventually what I ended up doing was adding a little bit more flour you don't want it to be too sticky that's the main focus no sticky sticky bad so we're gonna go ahead and mix this part up and then we're gonna go ahead and start baking them after this okay so after going ahead and honestly I think I want to say I put the oven at 425 degrees and I left them in there for about 10 to 15 minutes now what I like to do is it's kind of hard to tell if it's done cooking because it's a solid black cookie so you can't really tell if it's done or not so what I ended up doing was checking on the cookie itself within like eight minutes or so and I actually touch it if it feels like it's way too soft like it feels Feels like it's just doughy and it's not cooked all the way I'll leave it in there for an additional two minutes now once it hit the 12 minute mark I actually took them out and I let them rest doing so it allows it to cook more while it's out without burning the heck out of the cookie even more so that it looks right now now what I'm using is a great value icing cookie thingy now I'm gonna be completely honest I actually put these in the refrigerator because I don't know <laughs> don't put them in the fridge actually do not put these in the fridge look at me squeezing the heck out of it I'm squeezing the life out of the cookies do not do it 
leave them out and it will be a lot more easier to squeeze the icing out. And eventually I had to print out a picture of the Nightmare Kraken to use as a reference. Now, I may be an artist at trade when it comes to graphic arts and just generally drawing. I have never decorated a cookie in my entire life. So I was struggling greatly trying to decorate this cookie. So as you can tell, I, I'm just, I, I'm having so much trouble trying to decorate this little thing. And I am working on the smaller eye portions. And we'll go ahead and speed this up because it took me a really long time to finalize. All right, so here's the bad news for myself. I totally forgot to buy a tube of just regular black icing. So again, <laughs> I had to use some of the regular white cookie icing, get one of my little bowls and mix it in with the black dye and use the candle stick to <laughs> birthday candle stick. Oh my gosh, I had to use a birthday candlestick and look how sad that looks. And then I used the red icing to make the iconic red swirl on our Nightmare Kraken cookie while I struggle to do this. Um, this was my first cookie, so I did not expect anything less because this is the first attempt that I'm ever doing decorating a cookie, so... <laughs> I struggled guys, I tried. I had tried to decorate it. All right, the moment of truth. My first attempt at the Nightmare Kraken cookie. Oh my gosh. I messed up guys, I messed up big time. And true as that was, this is attempt number two. So I ended up having to actually put the icing inside of warm water and that actually helped out a lot. So this is going to be a lot more quicker in the process of it. And to be honest, this is the only other cookie that I actually decorated because I only had the patience to do two cookies from this. Alrighty, and the moment of truth. I ended up having great success with this one around. Now, I did not use the birthday candle method again. That was terrible. But I ended up using a Ziploc bag, which was suggested by Nomana, and I used one of my tips from my piping bag. I accidentally broke it. So this is the final results of our nightmare cracking cookie. And I'll be honest, it was delicious. Um, so this was the thing that I had, right? And I forgot I needed to buy a piping bag so I could make black frosting for the pupil because I forgot. Mom! <laughs> 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 